Good afternoon. Welcome to Trigonometry. We're going to be focusing on Chapter 3 in this lecture, specifically 3.1. I'm Professor Bailey from Dallas College. Our learning objectives are to look at radian measure. How do we convert between degrees and radians? Um, and then looking at trigonometry function values of angles in radians. So our definition of a radian is an angle with its vertex at the center of a circle that intercepts an arc on the circle equal in length to the radius of the circle has a measure of one radian. So what this is saying, this arc length, you see this kind of curvature of the circle here, kind of if you thought of this like a pizza pie, it's the crust of the pie, is the same measurement as, as the radius of the circle. If the arc length and the radius are the same, then the angle measure is one radian. When we're converting between degrees and radians, we multiply a degree measure by pi over 180 radians and simplify, and this converts to radians. We do exactly the opposite. We use the inverse of that. So if we have a radian measure that we want to convert to degrees, we multiply the radians by 180 over pi and then simplify this to convert to degrees. Make sure you add these. So let's try some problems now. What I want you to do is hit the pause button and try these three but three excuse me these three problems. I'll try to remember to slide those pause in whenever you should pause and try these three problems. Okay? So hit pause and I'm going to keep going. So if you don't hit pause, you're not going to get the practice. So again, remember for 45, I mean from degrees to radians, we multiply by pi over 180. So when we multiply 45 times pi over 180, we get pi over 4 radians. Here we have in B, we have negative 270. So negative 270 pi over 180 gives us negative 3 pi over 2 radians. Here we just have a decimal. So we multiply by the decimal. Here we're going to go ahead and use the um, pi button on our calculator to use the value of pi. So it's 249.8 times pi over 180, and we get a 4.360 radians. Notice here that um, the first two, A and B, have an equal sign because these are um, exact measures. Whenever we get into decimals, um, we have an approximation because we're rounding at some point. Remember, pi goes on and on and on, and even our calculator can only go out so many digits. So these are estimates. They're very close estimates, but they are still approximations and not exactly. So if a question in your homework asks for you an exact answer, it's asking it for it in fraction form and probably with a um, with a pi included in the answer. Not always, but um, typically fractions are the exact value, and we don't want to um, try to use an abbreviation, excuse me, an approximation for pi's value. So let's try the other way. Now try converting some problems from radian measures um, to degrees. So again, hit the pause button and try these three problems. And then when you're ready, hit play again. So 9 pi radians, again, remember 9 pi over 4 radians, we multiply by 180 over pi. And we get, notice the pi's will cancel out. And so we just get 405 degrees. For uh, negative 5 pi over 6, we get negative 150 degrees. And again, here we have 4.25 radians. So we've got an approximation in the radian measure. So we're going to have an approximation um, in the um, degree measure as well. So we simply multiply 4.25 times 180 divided by the pi button on our calculator. And we get 253.5 degrees. And uh, they've converted this into degrees and minutes here. OK? When you're looking at angle measurements in this class, if there's no unit of angle measure um, specified, so if it just says 120, you have to um, assume that that's in radians. Whenever there's not a degree symbol, then the measure is in radians, even if it looks like degrees. So here's a table of some exact values. We've got our um, special triangles on the left. Remember we did um, 30, 45, and 60 degree angles. Um, and that's interesting. I guess that's the approximate radians. I'm curious. 
Um, so these are the measures for the angles that we looked at in chapter one and two um, to find the trig function specifically using those triangles. And then of course we have the quadrantals here, 90, 180, 270, 360. This to me is more valuable, especially when you can see that um, a straight angle as a measurement of pi and 360 is 2 pi. So every circle is 2 pi. And that's easier to hold into my kind of my mind um, than perhaps looking at, you know, remembering that 30 degrees is pi over 6. If I remember these quadrantals, then it's easier for me to kind of remember um, this kind of circle uh, measurement, etc. Okay, so here's a lot of students tend to memorize this chart. Again, I tend to focus on knowing that this is pi. Let me go around um, halfway. It's pi for a straight angle and then back 360. It's 2 pi. So then I know this is pi over 2. If I bisect that, I get pi over 4. And then I can figure out what 2 thirds of that is, um, et cetera. So it's easier for me to kind of memorize the, the quadrantals and especially pi and 2 pi. And then I can figure out the rest. And again, remember, these are all just reference angles um, from the x-axis that we discovered. So the last calculations we want to do are to actually figure out some trig function values using radian measures. Okay, I want you to hit pause here. So what you want to do is you want to convert the radian angle to a degree angle, because that's what you're familiar with, and then figure out using reference angles or your, or your circle uh, table, I'd rather use reference angles. Um, to find the actual trig function for A, B, and C. So again, hit pause now, convert the angle, and then find the trig value. I'm going forward, so hit pause. All right, so tangent 2 pi over 3, remember we multiply by 180 over pi, and we get the tangent of 120 degrees. This is in quadrant 2, and the reference angle is 60. So what is the um, tangent opposite over adjacent? and remembering what the x and y values will be in quadrant two, and we get negative square root of three. The sine of three pi over two is the same as the sine of 270 degrees. This is our quadrantal down, it's the negative y axis, and there we get the sine equals negative one. Um, and finally, we have cosine of negative four pi over three. Uh, the cosine of negative 4 pi over 3 is the negative cosine of 60 degrees. And so this is in quadrantal 4. That's still our reference angle. So we can use our triangle to figure out um, opposite over hypotenuse. Sorry. So cot. No, adjacent over hy hypotenuse. My bad. Cosine of 60 is adjacent over hypotenuse. And the Cosine for negative 60, which is in quadrant 4, would be negative 1 half. Okay, so that's the end of our lecture for 3.1. Um, pretty quick lecture, and hopefully you did the practice. And go do your homework now, guys.